That then, colleagues, brings us to 2022. Um, we hope you have seen this, that it has been another dynamic and active year for CISA. We leveraged the agility, the advances, and the opportunities that were catalyzed for us by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which, you, as you just heard, was so capably managed in the last two years, to build on the society's established strengths, as well as to build on the uh, society's emergent strengths. Simultaneously, and I'd like to believe reflexively, we have accounted for our historical, our geographical, our disciplinary, and our epistemological positions and positionings, our strategic trajectory within the society, and of course, service to our members and service to, our, to society. So CISA came into 2022 ever alert to both the particular and the persisting health and social pandemics facing our country and certainly contemporary social landscapes, contemporary social ecologies, contemporary social events, nationally, on the African continent and elsewhere that have bearing, very direct bearing on the enactments of the society's vision, um, our mission and our core objectives. So my task this morning really within that context is to share with you some key highlights of the past year of which the so society is really very proud um, and into which much labor and much love has gone into um, and to do a little bit of looking forward as we look ahead to the next cycle. We have seen a growing number of CISA members begin to engage with the decolonial turn in psychology. The traditions of resistance and the activist quest for psychologies of liberation are certainly not new in South African psychology. Still, there remain insistent questions and discontent in the contemporary moment about how we in the discipline attend to the various social historical inscriptions of power, of difference and oppression that mark everyday life in this country about the construction, the content, and the consumption of our research, of our scholarship, and our intervention practice, and about our teaching, training, and pedagogies, and our curricula. So attention to these imperatives, um, pleased to say, have found articulation in a range of decolonizing initiatives that are led by and that, in and that involve CISA members, including research, community engagement and teaching hubs, journal and book publications, webinars, conference presentations, and critical civic engagement. With this, um, an interest group on de decolonizing psychology was launched this year as a platform within the structures of the society to harness, to bring together, to strengthen, um, bring coherence, and to expand the work that is very much underway which is increasingly coming to be influential well beyond the country and well beyond the continent. I'm pleased to say that we received a very positive response from members, which, su which suggests that the um, points to the fact that the interest group will very soon be constituted as a division of the society. Uh, an important highlight to note. With CISA's contributions increasingly finding value and resonance outside of its immediate community, we deepened and further enlarged our trans-organizational and our transnational engagement and solidarities this year. For example, we enjoy a strong uh, partnership with the Pan-African Psychology Union, with the society actively supporting and participating in its online congress, which took place in March this year, and also members of the society serving on its leadership collective. We work with the non profit public benefit organization Whistleblower House this year to provide rapid access to psychological services. And we also formalize our collaboration with members of the Palestine Global Mental Health Network through a memorandum of understanding. In addition, the public engagement and activism efforts of the CISA leadership and CISA members continue to be prominent, continue to be notable. These have been visible through multiple channels, various channels, including print and non-print media communications on a variety of critical 
psychosocial and psychopolitical issues and official statements on, on such um, issues as gaps in mental health care and South Africa's failing health care system. We have also celebrated the accolades and acknowledgements received by several colleagues in recognition of their achievements, of their standing, and their expertise um, in the country, but also internationally. And to them, we say congratulations and well-deserved. <laughs> Pleasingly, our membership grew as well. Uh, despite the uncertainties of the time. So I hope you will agree that it's been a vibrant year of tending, of generating. The size of the community has labored hard, but we also remain attentive to the work that is yet to be done and the growth that is necessary for fuller maturation. In this respect, SISA as a learned society is probably tasked with multiple um, imperatives. But to name some, um, the need to ongoingly reflect and be responsive to our pan-Africanist context, this is important. To look at our functioning and influence in a time of larger nationwide change and global change and related health, social, environmental, ethical, human rights and citizen uh, engagement priorities. Uh, in the context of the regressive currents of the age, the challenges and opportunities posed by a rapidly transforming digital world, and importantly, of course, the needs and interests of our members and our member offerings. And of course, our internal environment, including matters of resources, uh, next generation leadership, matters of partnerships and strategic impact. No doubt, I have no doubt that we will make strides along the way. We will probably also falter along the way but colleagues, I would say at this time that we are generally well positioned to address these imperatives. And so I look forward to the next year and the coming cycles with a great deal of radical optimism. This then brings me to the Congress itself. As you know, the Congress theme is tending to the seeds of crisis, looking to a new horizon of African-centered psychology um, I hope you've had a chance to look at the scientific program. It really looks exciting, um, features several symposia, roundtables, oral presentations, a hybrid event, um, poster presentations, which together cover both existing themes, emerging themes in the discipline. We also get to engage with SISA presidents and meet with journal editors in dedicated sessions. Um, bearing the ancestral and the intellectual traces of revolutionaries such as Franz Fanon and Kwame Nkrumah. The proceedings will commence with three invited panel discussions that collectively engage critical and contemporary issues and questions. This on democracy and psychology, which comes on next. Um, Pan-Africanism and psychology and next generation social agents in psychology. These panels will be led by established and emerging scholars, practitioners, and activists from South Africa, as well as other parts of the world, um, and emerging scholars, practitioners, um, who are also located within and with, uh, beyond the discipline. Certainly a highlight, a big highlight of the program is the annual SISA President's Lecture, which is to be delivered this year by the inspiring writer, activist, and political analyst, Sison uh, Kim Simang. There, these are some highlights that you will see from the program that there's really so much more. This then brings me to the end. I know we're watching our time, but before I close, let me say a special and particular thanks to my colleagues in the SISA presidency, Professors Floretta Bonzaya and Professor Gard Stevens, and the SISA office, um, in particular. Executive Director Fatima Sidat for the efforts in making Congress 2022 happen. And of course, together with the SISA Executive Committee and SISA Council for the support given to me during my tenure as, a pres as president. It certainly has been an honor to be part of the SISA leadership, to work alongside my colleagues. Um, 
and uh, yeah, to be troubled by you sometimes, many times actually. Um, I also received counsel from the Sisa Wise in the last year. The Sisa Wise, you know who you are, and I really appreciated that as well. I look forward to handing over to you Professor Von Zaya and the new executive. Um, to my clan in the Institute for Social and Health Sciences, I see you. Thanks for your enduring support and allow me the space to take on the size role. And I will add that my year as president gave me pause for reflection on several, several things, including my involvement with SISA over the years. My own history with SISA traces back to the early and heady days of um, rebellion within South African psychology, when SISA had yet to be birthed, actually. So I would like to award a very personal and special mention to the then Psychology and Apartheid Committee and the then UWC Black Psychologists Collective, with whom I found home as a young student and whose activism, whose influence and mentorship was really, really very impactful for me and very defining for me at the time, and it remains so. And I certainly was very conscious about this throughout my, my presidency. Some of you are in the room today, here, now. I see you. Thank you very much, my friends. Thank you very much. Um, one of you might be listening in online. Thank you. Most importantly, I would like to thank each of you for attending the Congress this year, for bringing your expertise, bringing your offerings, bringing your friendship to our gathering. SISA could not accomplish what we do without our members' support, without our, our members' contributions. Um, as I come to the end of my time as SISA president then, I ex really, I extend much gratitude to all of you for your, for your ongoing support. It has been a pleasure to serve you. I hope that you will have a stimulating, engaged, and thoroughly um, enjoyable time at the conference. Thank you very much. <laughs>